My name is Enrique Dubos. I manage the uh, gaming evangelism team at Adobe. Um, and this morning, um, it's going to be 25, 30 minutes. I just want to give you a little bit uh, update on to what Adobe is doing around gaming. Okay. Now I have a little bit of uh, surprise here. I can do my slides in both English and Russian. So for those of you that speak Russian um, or Ukrainian, you can read those. Um, I have no responsibility on what the slide says because uh, I send them to the local office and they translate it for me. So I hopefully they say what I'm supposed to say. But um, that's the idea. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is um, so there's been a lot of uh, talk and a lot of um, comments and a lot of noise on what is, wh where is Flash going? Is Flash dead? Is Flash not dead? What is Adobe doing? So the first thing I want to talk about is um, what we have been focusing in Adobe around Flash. And there is an area that we have been focusing a lot in the past year, and an area where we're going to be focusing fully going forward, which is actually gaming for Flash, or Flash for gaming. So we're putting a whole division of um, engineers, product management, marketing, and people like myself and others behind making sure that we keep innovating as much as we can on Flash for games. Okay. Um, so that tells you a little bit of our focus and where the innovation is going to be going. So this is really a sign and a commitment from Adobe in the sense of we really believe that Flash is key and Flash is, is a great platform for delivering games, both on online, desktop, and mobile. And we are putting all the resources behind that. Okay? So fla focus is uh, the first thing. Now, um, why is this important? Why we think that we need to put a lot of effort into Flash for games? just because the audience for Flash game is so big. Um, we have introduced a couple of uh, updates uh, in the past releases that allows silent updates to the Flash player. So this pretty much allows us to uh, update 500 million people in less than 24 hours when we introduce new features. And that, combined with the penetration that we have today, around 1.3 billion uh, users, allows us to have the largest um, game platform for delivering games online than anybody else. Okay? Um, if you compare the number of Xboxes, uh, uh, Playstations, or Wii's in the market, that's about 11 times higher from a Flash perspective than those consoles. And we can bring console quality games to the web via Flash player. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, 9 out of the top 10 um, games on Facebook are Flash games. Um, Recently, um, Singa released FarmVille 2, uh, the number one application used in Facebook, over 50 million users, is a, is a Flash-based Stage 3D, I'll talk about what Stage 3D is, um, game built uh, with our technology. So that, that's a little bit to tell you that the commitment around building games for Flash is not only uh, not disappearing, but it's actually increasing. We're seeing more and more demand of building games with the Flash platform. Um, now, you can definitely experience those games on, on the web, on the desktop, but we're also seeing a lot of uh, um, um, outside the web experiences being uh, packaged or used using uh, the, the Flash technology. And I'm going to talk about also uh, a few uh, case studies around uh, Flash games that are running on iOS and, or Android and so forth, because one of the nice uh, aspects that the Flash platform gives you when it comes to building games is the ability to reuse your code and put it in multiple platforms without having to actually rewrite it in, in native code. Uh, so this is pretty much uh, what we mean by no friction. With no friction meaning you write your code once, and obviously you need to adapt your content to multiple devices and multiple screens, but the idea is that you reduce your development uh, time. Um, I was speaking to somebody that is actually sitting over there, that um, he was telling me about the thousands of euros they saved by leveraging the existing base code and just packaging to different to different platforms uh, versus having to rewrite the code, the game, sorry, in, in native iOS or native Java, uh, native Android and so forth. So this is really key, especially for small to indie to medium uh, publishers that want to get as many titles out there as possible. Um, if you actually have one base code and you can leverage that as much as you can, it's actually uh, saving you a lot of money. You can produce more titles more frequently. Um, and th obviously, this, uh, this applies across uh, the web, and it applies to uh, iOS, Android, uh, and so forth. And we use a packaging technology called Adobe Air for that. Now, 
why we've seen such an um, interest in, in Flash lately and why we've seen um, tremendous traction in terms of uh, games developed using or achieving AAA kind of quality. Um, this is thanks to a technology that we introduced over a year ago called Stage 3D. Stage 3D is just a, a set of low-level GPU accelerated APIs. So this allows game developers to tap into the GPU and to develop hardware accelerated content, hardware accelerated games. Um, with that, we can offload most of the processing to the GPU and we can concentrate on actually uh, providing a great experience for the games. Um, now, when it comes to the GPU itself, obviously it provides uh, way faster experiences for 2D and 3D rendering, uh, 60 frames per second, AAA kind of quality and so forth. I'm just going to jump into the Russian ones. Okay? Um, and today, with the, with the latest updates to the driver support that we have on, on Flash Player, we can pretty much hit up to 85% of the uh, desktops out there uh, with the driver requirements that we have, which are about two drivers up to 2005, 2006. So pretty much 85% of the market today, meaning PC uh, users connected to the web, can experience AAA quality games through the browser via Flash Player with a Stage 3D. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples. Um, so let's play. Let's play meaning let me show you a couple of um, showcases that are built with a Stage 3D running on the web today. Um, so for that, hopefully the internet will work. I'm first going to show you a game called Kindred. I don't know how you... Do that. I think I lost the... Um, every time you switch from PowerPoint to something else, I lose the resolution. It's very convenient, right? So let me just go to this one. All right. How does it look? Better? No? <laughs> All right. So let me just do this. So it's very interesting. Okay. Now you can see it, right? Okay. All right. Um, what is my game? So this one is called King's Road by uh, Rumble, which is a company in um, California. Um, and this is a RPG MMO experience, but they wanted to bring the next generation of MMO to the web by providing a similar experience that something that you will get on a, on a, on a console, but on the web. Um, so I'm going to load the data, hopefully, through the internet. And this is one of the games that I that I think they've managed to get the essence of what uh, RPGs, MMOs are, but giving you an experience that is uh, console quality. And I think this is great, because this is how we expect to actually players be uh, playing online in the future. Not only in the future, but now. Um, there is a lot of talk, a lot of interest around, obviously, mobile. Um, come on. There you go. Uh, around mobile. But there are countries, there are areas in the world, I would think, for instance, uh, China, where you go to China and you see an internet cafe with 150 Chinese people playing games on PCs. Because not everybody there has an iPad. Obviously, everybody there probably has, or not everybody, but maybe there are 5 million iPads in China, but that represents 1% of the population over there, right? So the experience that you want to give those players on, on, the, um, um, on the internet has to be the same quality that you get on, on other devices. Um, and if I don't get my, oh, so maybe the ethernet works. Hold on. If this doesn't work, I'll, I'll show you um, first um, a local example. And I'll show you a uh, rumble later. All right. So the, this other one, yep. OK. So but you, can you see this one? Oh, yeah, this one, OK. All right, so this is an example by um, Square Enix, okay? I was in a talk yesterday, and they were actually um, showcasing games and talking about mobile. Um, the nice thing about this game is that it's built with Flash technology, it's built with a Stage 3D, um, and they're actually able to uh, reuse the assets that they built for Final Fantasy. Okay? So as you can see, characters and everything look a lot like the Final Fantasy ones because they are from the Final Fantasy uh, object materials. Now they were able to import and produce a Flash-based game that they can deploy on the web. 
So as you can see, it looks like a AAA quality game that you would run on your console, but it's now running on the desktop, which is amazing in terms of performance, quality, graphics, and so forth. So now they can bring these sort of games to the social network, so adding new revenue streams, because now you can publish to Facebook and whatnot, and you will get at the same level of quality, right? This is just a preview demo. Um, they will be uh, launching this game later on, uh, probably this year, uh, especially first in Japan. But as you can see, the experience is super nice. So this is one of the experiences that, of games that you can actually build today using the fast technology. It's pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, let me see if we can get um, Rumble uh, running here. It looks like it's mm, way faster now. All right, there you go. Again, MMO RPG experience. All right. Let's kill this guy. <laughs> A very nice, super good looking guy. <coughs> You usually need to have a little bit of blood in your game, so that one is not fun, right? You get a couple of coins. Alright. So, again, another example built with a flash technology, built with a stage 3D that is being on the works and it's going to be, it's, it's actually on, on beta right now, you can register for this game and you can start playing as well. Um, I could show you many more, there is, there is a lot of content coming from, um, especially on the MMORPG side from China, that is super nice, they go crazy on the graphics. Um, so those are, those are a couple of examples. Now, the same thing I was talking to you about in terms of, um, can you see the, can you see the slides? No? Oh, sorry. You can? Yeah, no, I mean, he is recording and he needs to change the resolution. I'll change the resolution to 1280. All right. Confirm. Can you see the slides now? Okay. Well. Anyway, let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about this one. Sorry. Um, so the same, the same uh, sort of GPU accelerated APIs that we have um, talked about for the web, uh, we also enable uh, stage 3D on mobile devices. Uh, and this is extremely important because if you build a game like that one that I've showed you and you want to bring the same experience to, to, a, to a tablet or to a mobile device, you want to maintain the same level of APIs and the same level of performance. So we added a stage 3D support also for iOS and Android. Um, I, after the talk, because I don't have too much time, uh, I can give you a few, if you guys want to take a look at a couple of games that are running on my iPad. Uh, one of them is, for instance, Super Hexagon. I don't know if you've played this game, but it's the simplest game, it's the hardest game I ever played in my life. Uh, I usually last, how many of you know Super Hexagon? Okay. I last like 10 seconds, that's it. Okay. Um, and it's built with a stage 3D, and it's been number one iOS game for a, for a few weeks uh, here and there in a couple of countries. As well, it's been featured. There is another one called Wonderput. All of these games are actually developed using Flash technology running on iOS. Remember, we don't have the Flash player running inside the browser on iOS, but you can have Flash games packaged as native ones running on iOS, which is very, very cool as well. This is another one as well, uh, Space Away. Launch sequence. Uh, so pretty much we have over 20,000 uh, over 20,000 uh, Flash-based games, Air-based games running on, on on the App Store today, and much many more coming. Um, so in terms of how is this built, again, this is powered by a stage 3D, and a stage 3D is just a low-level API on top of the GPU that you have on your, on your device, whether it's your desktop or your browser, sorry, whether it's your um, a computer or it's your mobile, it just runs on top of DirectS, OpenGL, OpenGL is too. Uh, so this, this, this is pretty much the architecture, and this is how it's built. One of the nice things about stage 3D is that it is a very limited set of APIs. It's only about 14 classes that we expose uh, which allows us to be simpler and also secure because we don't expose a lot of API. Obviously, giving ex access to a, a, a very big access to the APIs in the GPU would, uh, would allow people to actually um, 
try to hack a little bit more than if you just expose a very set, a small limited number of, of, of APIs. Um, in terms of, um, sorry, here, right? Um, so, Stage 3D is a low-level API, and obviously you require to know uh, a little bit of uh, deep knowledge in terms of uh, um, shader language uh, and, and, and that for which obviously not everybody is, is used to uh, um, program at that low level. So what we do is actually have frameworks, so we, we provide that frameworks that are sitting on top of Stage 3D and allows regular ActionScript developers to uh, use ActionScript and to use ActionScript that they've been using before, but just to tap into the GPU. One of those frameworks is Starling, that provides a, a 2D um, API to access the GPU, and it mimics the display list API that you have on the Flash player today, which is very, uh, ha very interesting for developers that have been using Flash in the past. Um, now, for instance, who is using a framework like Starling to bring um, Flash stage 3D banes to the web? Rovio, okay? Besides you, <laughs> uh, Rovio as well. I mean, this is the number one um, social gamer in Facebook after, for instance, Farmville. Um, they've been using uh, Stage 3D to bring, um, and a Starling combined to actually bring uh, Angry Birds to Facebook. So if you go to the Facebook version of Angry Birds, it's built with a Starling, it's built with a Stage 3D. Um, I talk about Singa uh, and Farmville 2. They are actually not using uh, Starling, but they're using another framework called Flare 3D as well to actually bring uh, Farmville 2 to the web using 3D. Um, another example of a framework that is not necessarily for 2D development, but more for like UI components is actually Feathers. And it's also a framework available sitting on top of a Stage 3D that allows you to actually use components that are Stage 3D based, which is very interesting. Instead of using the regular components that come in Flash and that are not hardware accelerated, you can use Feathers because it's a framework that, that sits on top of it. Um, and other examples of, um, of 3D frameworks that have been uh, in the works or are, are actually available to, to many of you. Uh, I, I mentioned Flare 3D. There are others such as Alternativa 3D. One that we are funding is a, is a Way 3D as well. And a Way 3D allows us to actually bring super nice um, quality games to, to the web. In, in fact, uh, one of the uh, samples that I showed you before was actually using a, a Way 3D. Uh, let me show you a quick um, demo of a game that has been um, um, or it's been in the works with the stage using a way 3D framework. I think this is one of the best good looking demos that previews of games are coming into the market in terms of the quality and experience. The complexity of the objects, the number of um, objects in the scenes, and the shaders and all that is just super, super, super nice. Um, it's called um, Delta Strike. Alright, so the stack here, yeah, it looks good, thank you. I didn't write it, but it does look good. Um, so the stack here is uh, feathers for like a 2D uh, UI components. You have uh, Way 3D for 3D environments and 3D games, and then starting for 2D. Um, so just the Russian one. And in terms of the stack of how it lays out on, on top of uh, uh, the GPU, you have there uh, the, the architecture. Okay. Um, now, obviously, uh, sometimes, how many of you are f action script developers that use Flash to actually create games? So how many of you actually use C, C++ to create games? Okay. Now, for those of you that don't want to use Ax ActionScript or Flash, uh, you can uh, still produce Flash-based games and you can deploy those games on the web. Uh, we introduced a tool, tool chain called uh, Alchemy that we just renamed it and it's now officially called Flask. So Flask is a fla it's, it's, it's called the Flash Runtime C++ Compiler. And it provides a BDS, BSDM-like uh, GCC-based environment to compile existing C, C++ libraries and code uh, into Flash. Okay? This is extremely, extremely interesting because many game libraries, engines, um, games out there are actually written in C, C++. And you can leverage all that existing content and all those existing code and start producing Flash-based games using this, this technology. Um, one of the um, uh, 
game tools that is actually using the Flash technology to actually produce games and to export games from the tool to Flash is actually Unity. We've, we've, we've partnered with Unity and we're working with them to allow Unity developers to actually be able to export to Flash. Because obviously uh, this is a, an area which is very interesting for them because it allows them to actually tap into a world that hasn't been uh, available to them before, which is the entire uh, web running the Flash player. So now you can use Unity to actually export to Flash. The export capabilities is right now in beta and it will be coming out in the next, in the next release of, of Unity. Um, I do how many of you play with Unity, have started with Unity? Uh, I do have a demo here of Shadowgun, which is their feature um, a game running the Flash player, if you want to take a look at it as well in the after, the, after the session. Um, so again, you can all grab and start playing with Flask. Uh, it's, it's available today. You simply go to, the, uh, to this URL, just look for uh, f uh, Flask on the gaming.adobe.com and it will, uh, it will take you to the, um, to the technology. Okay? Um, the last piece I want to talk about before I run out of time um, is profiling. Um, profiling is an area where uh, we think it's uh, extremely, extremely important to provide a great tool for game developers that are using Flash to actually deploy content. Um, especially because there are there's stuff in the, in, the, in the Flash period today that limits the way we can profile content and we can optimize content. Uh, for instance, the VM, um, through tools such as Flash Builder, only expose uh, um, the, uh, the, the VM itself related information. Uh, you can only profile debugger um, builds, not release builds, and many other stuff that prevents developers from actually um, really tapping into the game, really optimizing where the bottlenecks are, fixing bugs and so forth from optimization point of view. And Monocle is, uh, we're really, really excited about this technology. I'm going to show you a, a quick demo of how um, Monocle works, okay? And you'll, s you'll be able to see what you can actually achieve in terms of perfor uh, optimization performance of your games using, using this tool. So let me just uh, jump into uh, Monocle. How many of you have seen Monocle? None of you? Okay. Um, so hopefully I won't lose the... Uh oh, you have? Good. All right. So let me just very quickly show you Monocle. Um, let's try running that same game. Let's, uh, let's do Square Enix. Okay, I'm going to preload the game, okay, and automatically um, Monocle to start profiling or uh, linking into the game so you can actually start take a look at what is happening. Um, let's for instance select a period of time here, a couple of slides, we can actually preview the game inside the tool, okay. let me just close this because we already profile a lot of uh, frames. So you, you can take a look at the particular frame at the moment. You can actually say, okay, so at this, in this particular frame, uh, the game is running at 28.2 frames per second. It seems that there are a few issues with the uh, action script part. That's what is taking most of my time. We can actually take a look at the amount of time taking on executing a stage 3D versus uh, built-in packages, meaning in the Flash Player package uh, structure, or maybe if I'm using a third-party um, uh, framework. In this case, they are using Alternativa as the 3D framework. Uh, you can dig it into the, the stage 3D calls that happen in a particular time frame, um, memory allocation, CPU usage, uh, frame time um, executing a particular uh, time. Uh, again, this is a very complex environment that allows uh, Flash developers and ActionScript developers to really look into what uh, you can do uh, in terms of optimization with, uh, with the uh, um, with this tool. So it's, uh, I think it's going to change the way you, uh, you develop content and create content and optimize content for, for running games on, 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 on Flash and Air as well. Because you can actually not only monitor desktop-based games, I can actually link into a game running on my iOS, which is built with Flash, and it will profile it the same way. So it's pretty, pretty intense. Okay? Um, so you can, uh, there is a pre-release uh, open today. You can uh, start uh, adding yourselves to it and start testing the tools so you can uh, start working with, uh, with Monaco. Um, I'm going a little bit fast here, but that's just because I'm running out of time. Okay, 
So the way you pretty much configure Monocle is uh, you set it up in your iOS, for instance, to enable a profile in Monocle. Uh, you test the the, um, the, um, the movie, and then the content, this, 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 the, fl the, the game running on your iOS, and then you have uh, Monocle triggering all the particular um, connections to, to start listening to the game and start profiling the game. I'm three minutes late. Uh, sorry about that. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to be here after the talk. Um, most of the content, most of the demos that I've showed you today are available online. You can go to gaming.adobe.com. That's our central place for actually um, all gaming-related information. You can start downloading um, those games, testing those games, and also uh, looking into the technologies that I talked to you about today. Um, and again, I'll be here for any, any questions. I can take one question, two questions maybe. One question. One. Come on, give me one. One? One? Okay, yeah. one. One. Just Russian, one. Да? Так, Есть перевод? You'll translate. А, okay. uh, мы говорили о iOS и Android платформах. Uh, это очень uh, все замечательно, быстро работает и так далее. Но uh, ничего не говорили про Windows Phone 8. Uh, you told about uh, Android and iPhone, but you nothing to uh, say about uh, Windows. Windows. Yeah. Yes, we are also working with uh, uh, Microsoft on providing Windows support for. Uh, I, I, I assume you're you're talking about the air of packaging of um, games to Windows, and this is something that we're working with. And I don't have a final date on when that will be available, but we are working with Microsoft. Yeah, right now they are super busy trying to get Windows 8 out. <laughs> So as soon, uh, but we are do we have a great relationship with Microsoft. We work alone a lot, so we'll uh, we'll definitely have something for you there. Yeah. Sure. Uh, no, no I, I actually don't. I actually do not know. Um, seriously, if I I could tell you two months, three months, four months, six months, and I, I could be lying to you. No, I don't. I don't think it's in the years time frame. I think it's more in the months, but I, I just don't know when. Seriously. Let's thanks to Enrique for a great presentation. Thank you. <laughs>